And we are live. Good morning po sa inyong lahat back there in the Philippines. Or good evening, I mean. It's a really cold morning here from South Carolina, USA. And of course, we welcome back all of you to Gurung Pinoy. If this is your first time to watch us, make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. You can find us on YouTube as Gurung Pinoy. Please also follow our Facebook page. That's Gurung Pinoy. You can also still find us on Instagram and on TikTok, still at Gurung Pinoy. Okay, now I'd like to welcome all of you, especially sa ating mga first timers. Kawai kawai po tayo. Maraming salamat po for tuning in. And of course, I look forward to helping all of you pass the let, and I look forward to guiding you in today's discussion of our general education. These are the 20 items that you've answered through our quizzes. If you are asking where the quizzes is, the quizzes link po are posted on our Facebook page. Okay, but of course, before anything else, we are going to start our um, discussion tonight with our opening prayer. This has been prepared for us by Brother Efren Esteban. Please join me in our opening prayer. Lord God, maraming maraming salamat po sa walang tigil mo pong pagtulong sa bawat isa sa amin na iraos po namin ang bagong taon, Panginoon. Alam po namin na ikaw ang reason Bakit po kami nakakasurvive, Panginoon, because of your grace and mercy. Panginoon, salamat po sa kabutihan mo sa bawat isa sa amin. Panginoon, hiniling ho namin sa amin pong review na tulungan po kami, pagkalooban po kami ng pagkaintindi sa lahat ng mga leksyon na aming aaralin sa oras pong ito. Patuloy mo po na pagpalain ang bawat pamilya ho namin, Panginoon. Iniaasa po namin ang lahat, O Diyos, dahil Ikaw po ang makapangyarihang Diyos na nagpapala. Tumitingin sa bawat intention, bawat puso namin, O Diyos. Kaya ma, kami po ay lumalapit po sa inyo sa nagkakaisang panalangin po na ito. Patuloy mo pong pagpalain, O Diyos, ang bawat isa. Pagkaloban po ng karunungan uh, sa aming mga desisyon na ginagawa. Isa pong magandang desisyon, O Diyos. Ang aming pinili na maging guro o Diyos, sana po ay tulungan po kami na maganap ang mga pangarap po namin na ito. Panginoon, salamat po sa isang magandang regalo sa amin, ang Panginoong Jesus, na dahil sa Kanya ay itinuro po ang pagmamahalan sa bawat isa. Panginoon, Ikaw po ang may taas at makilala sa lahat ng aming mga ginagawa. Samano po kami sa kabuoan ng pag-aaral po na ito. Ang lahat pong ito o Diyos ay dalangin namin sa pangalan ni Kristo Jesus na aming Panginoon at manunubos. Amen. Amen at amin. Maraming salamat, Brother Efren Esteban, for always preparing our opening and closing prayers. Now again, malapit na malapit na ang inyong licensure examination for teachers. No, pag walang delay, that would be on March 28th of this year. Okay, so we hope and pray na mag-push through na yung schedule natin, no, ng let, no. But of course, we all know that for anything, for any battle that you are going to face, the best thing that you can do so that you'll know that you will succeed is to prepare. And the most important thing is that you are preparing correctly. That means tama yung inyong pagsagot, tama yung inyong pag-rationalize, tama yung concept nyo behind all the rationalizations and behind all the answers that you're choosing in your lab. Okay? So again, we are Gurung Pinoy. We are studying Gurung Pinoy. We've been in this business for a long time. You know that. If you go to our Facebook page, you can see all the credentials that we have. We don't only help our licensure examination for teacher students. We also have our civil service. We also have MTAP. My name is Mamet Saison Manaay. I've been a coach for a long time already. No, ever, uh, ever since I have graduated from the university, I've already started teaching, lecturing in different review centers, uh, even while waiting for my license. And then, of course, I started teaching professionally in Ateneo de Iloilo. I've taught in the juniors, junior high school, now junior science as integrated science, biology, chemistry, and physics. And then I went to Saudi Arabia to teach in an international school. I've also taught Korean English for some time. And of course, when I came back uh, to the Philippines, I got uh, married, got pregnant, had my baby, went back to Ateneo to teach part-time in the senior high school. Uh, that time I was already teaching physical science, earth science, and research. Then of course, I came here 
in 2018 in South Carolina, USA, and still now, until now, I'm still teaching in Manning High School, Manning, South Carolina. I'm teaching uh, biology two, physical science honors. I'm also going to be teaching biology one next semester. Okay, so we've been here for third school years now. Now my family and I are already here for three school years. This is the third school year that we have. Uh, and of course, still we're looking forward to teaching all of you also reach your dream of becoming licensed professional teachers. It was my dream to be to be here in the U.S. It was my dream to even just visit the U.S. Alam namin na marami Pilipino talaga nangangarap makapunta ng Amerika. And of course, in my case, I, I think I'm already fulfilled. No? I, I feel fulfilled and I've already reached my ultimate dream, ultimate goal or dream home ko talaga yung, yung dito nga sa U.S. But of course, there's no other home that than your country. No? Um, and we we still look forward to going back to the Philippines. We might go back in 2023, okay? So we're going back in 2023. If we decide to still come back here in the U.S., we won't know, okay? We don't know. But of course, uh, nothing feels like home, and we still feel like the best place on, on Earth in the world is, of course, the Philippines. So kawai kawai sa mga nandyan sa Pilipinas, good evening po. And of course, if you are in other parts of the world, mga adding good morning, good evening, or good afternoon din sa inyo. Now again, I have talked about the best preparation for your upcoming LET, and we, Guru Pinoy, we know that we can really help you pass the LET or even top the LET, okay? But of course, you also need to dedicate your time, commitment, your effort for you to really pass the upcoming licensure examination for teachers. That's again, as I've mentioned, on March 28th of this year. Now we have GROW. Grow, what is Grow? If this is your first time to watch us, you don't know what Grow is. Grow is Guru Pinoy Review Online Work Group. This is our exclusive FB group, and this is where we send all the exclusive materials that we have. I have some viewers on YouTube are asking, do you give us, uh, do you give soft copies of the things that you are discussing? The answer po is in Grow, okay? So Grow has everything I'm discussing in the live stream. Not only that, but also some added information, some secret materials that we got from our students, the feedbacks coming from our students we all put that in grow so in grow you can get everything that you need for you to pass the lab so again grow is Guru Pinoy review online work group and it is very cheap to become a member of grow it's only 500 pesos this is a one-time payment it's not a monthly payment it's one-time payment through palawan Cebuana ml through super chat super sticker we also have paypal we also have metro bank we also have gumroad okay now all the details can be found on your screen that's mom richelle villanueva my sister-in-law the address is Ilo Ilo City phone number, of course, also there. Now, right after paying, again, right after paying, please send us a message, a private message through Gurung Pinoy's Facebook page. A private message po, huwag niyo pong i-comment. And of course, send a copy, a picture of your receipt, then you will be added to the different groups that we have. Okay, if it's grow or whether it's your major, then we can add you to, to those groups. Now, we still have our majoring enrollment. We have bio, English, soft sci, math, Philippine, and MAPE have also already started today. So they already have their set one today. And of course, they're going to find their discussion videos there tomorrow morning, starting at 8 o'clock. Okay, so again, that's only 1,000 pesos. And we still have, of course, our all-in-one enrollment for grow plus majoring. That's 1,250 pesos only. Okay, now we also have our Metro Bank Savings account on your screen right now. now now, again, announcement. Today is the 9th, of course. We are having our Gen Ed live stream. Tomorrow, we are going to have your Prof Ed live stream along with your majoring, of course. Now, next uh, Saturday, Sunday, po, wala po tayong Gen Ed and Prof Ed live stream on Saturday and Sunday. We only have your majoring sets and your majoring discussion on Saturday and Sunday next weekend. Your Gen Ed and Prof Ed will be moved earlier, okay? So that's going to be on the 14th and 15th. That's a Thursday and Friday night, okay? Still at 7.30. PM PH time. So again, wala po tayong Saturday, Sunday na discussion next weekend, but that's going to be moved on Thursday and Friday. Okay, so Thursday and Friday po. Please spread the word. Please share this with your classmates sa ating mga kaguro, no? So sa mga maaring di makapanood today. Now, of course, the rest of our schedule for January would still be the same. 
Okay, so again, enrollment is still ongoing for Guru Pinoy International. Now again, your majorship coaches are high caliber coaches. These are extraordinary people, lecturers, teachers, uh, experts in their own fields. No, so hindi po kayo manginginayang if you enroll in study Guru Pinoy's majoring, dahil salang salapo itong ati mga majorship coaches. Hindi po lamang ito yung kung sino nakuha natin sa kanto na hindi na hindi makapag elaborate, na hindi makapag explain ng kanilang mga sinasabi. No, these are experts in their fields and these are people we trust these are people that i personally know and these are the people that i personally pick because i know that these people are the right people that can guide you that can let you that can help you pass the let okay so trust if you trust guru pinoy if you trust me you should also have a hundred percent of your trust on these people that we have here of course for math you have dr kim j and shaw graduated summa cum laude passed the let in 2010 ranked third in september 2010 licensure examination for teacher secondary level we have coach renan for mape he is um an awardee of national commission for culture and the arts he's a good friend of mine he has never had a mape student who failed the lab okay now we also have professor paul herano for english he is a um, longtime professor of english he's also studying to become a lawyer right now we trust him so much now he's also a um um editor-in-chief of um several newspapers and also school papers we also have professor rene oquendo he's from up you know he graduated from up he taught in up and now he's teaching he's still teaching in ateneo uh he used to be my co-teacher in ateneo and of course i know his his capacity and he he can also um help you and guide you through your social science and majorship no marami sa social science now of course we also have professor lali jane chang i know that you have all met uh, professor lali jane Jane Cheng through your, um, oh no, not yet, tomorrow you will meet her through your video discussion. She's a very uh, good friend of mine too, used to be my co-teacher also in Ateneo and she has been teaching Filipino for 20 years already, more than 20 years and she has been a supervisor, a coordinator of Filipino for a long time, okay? So these people, again, these are people I can, um, I, that I put my trust in hundred percent and these are people that i chose to really help you with your component for your majorship again remember if you are a secondary uh education graduate your your majorship is going to receive 40 percent of your rating your prof ed is going to receive 40 percent of your rating of your rating and of course 20 percent from your gen ed okay so napaka importante po ng inyong majoring hindi po po pwedeng gen ed lam at prof ed lamang yung inyong pinaghahandaan make sure that the right person is guiding you in your taking the lab especially in your majorship okay and of course in biology i'm taking care of my bio babies kawai kawai sa aking mga bio babies um of course i've been doing this for a long time i'm still teaching biology until now i've taught all subjects in science area no and i've never had a bio baby who failed the lab okay so i've always i'm always emphasizing it this do not be the first that's a lot of pressure new but we know that you can all do this okay i know that you can all pass the lab with my guidance with um your guidance to different coaches that you have jet and profit of course i'm going to take care of that we are planning on the different things that we can offer you no we we will have your final coaching we have we are going to have your your pre-board examinations and of course these are all chosen topics these are all chosen questions these are questions that really would target the, the questions that would come out in the lab the actual lab questions and we know that we um when once you get to go to your lab no madalina lang sa inyo okay we will find that out very soon that's going to be on march 28th now of course if you are a, a major for tle agri and fish values Ed and FISA, you know, physical science, we don't have your majorship. We don't have any lectures for you. So what we can do is to offer you our free materials, no, free review materials. All you need to do is to watch the general science videos and coach uh, with Doc H. No? You can find us on YouTube. And of course, you follow the instructions so that you can be added to our classrooms for these majors, other majorships that you find on your screen. Now, we also have started your math tricks with Coach Dennis Bendishon. 
And you can find this video also on our YouTube channel. Some videos are also posted on our Facebook page. We will be posting more videos. A lot of you are saying that his math tricks are all um, are all very important, very effective, very helpful. Now remember, calculators are not allowed in your gen ed. The only thing where you are allowed to use a calculator, the only major would be math. Okay, the physical science majors told me that even them, they are not allowed to use a calculator. So even math, uh, only math majors are allowed to use their calculators in their majorship. But for gen ed, there is no use of a calculator. So it's very important that you know math tricks so that you, you can get the correct answer at a very fast pace. Okay, so we are also offering you math tricks by Coach Dennis Bendishon. This is all free. All right. But of course, uh, yes, before we start our discussion, we've also already started selling our, our civil service examination refresher. There's a prof, a prof level and of course, sub prof level. No. So if you want to to have a copy of this. You know someone is going to take the civil service. Uh, there is no, I, I believe there's no schedule yet. But if you know someone who's trying to prepare for the civil service, no, napakahirap din ng civil service, you can buy our ebook. You can just go to our Facebook page and ask us or maybe send us a message, okay? Then you you can avail of our ebook. All right, but again, tonight's discussion is all about your general education and we start right now. Okay, but before we start, of course, make sure that you like this video. If you're watching us on YouTube, go ahead and like this video. Kawai kawai po sa ating mga YouTubers, sa ating team YouTube. And of course, um, if this is your first time to watch us, then uh, please do subscribe to our channel. Please do welcome, um, welcome our first timers, team YouTube. If this is your first time to watch us on YouTube, then go ahead and mention that so that you're... Uh, your YouTube team or team YouTube can um, welcome you. Okay, so again, please do like us, like this video if you're watching us on YouTube. And of course, if you're watching us on Facebook, please don't forget to react to this video. Start a watch party, tag it, uh, tag your friends, you no, know, share it with your friends, share it on your Facebook account, share it on the different groups that you've um, already joined on Facebook. Okay, go ahead. And we can start with question number one. All right, we start with question number one. Ma'am Joy Dairiet, before that, maraming salamat po for your consistent napakape. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Joy, sa, sa iyong ayuda. Okay, number one, the morning air, the morning air smells blank in the garden than in the living, living room. This is in English. Now, is it letter A, sweet, letter B, sweeter, letter C, sweetly, or letter D, more sweet? What's your answer for number one? Watching from Bataan, UB. Hello po, Sir Lloyd Manalo, first timer. Team YouTube, pake welcome naman si Sir Lloyd. Okay, what's your answer for this question that we have? Mm -hmm. Mom Jaren on Facebook, welcome po. Mom Jaren Jing Jing, good evening. First time ko po umaten dito. Watching from Negros Occidental. Good evening po. Assalamu alaikum, Ma'am Nir Taraman. Good evening po sa lahat ng ating mga brothers and sisters na Muslim na nandyan sa Mindanao at sa anmang panig ng mundo. Assalamu alaikum po sa inyong lahat. Okay, a lot of you are answering letter B. Okay, what about Team Facebook? Hindi ko na naman nakikita yung comment ng team Facebook. Let me go back to the page. Okay, team YouTube is answering letter B. What about team Facebook? What's your answer for question number one? Okay, some of you are answering letter A. Karamihan yata sa ating team Facebook, letter A yung sagot. Mm -hmm. Now, uh... Bakit letter B karamihan na sagot dito ng ating team YouTube team YouTube no? And now as you can see your letter B and D here are the same no? So sweeter and more sweet these are comparative adjectives no? Comparative itong ating adjectives. Remember you have your your positive, comparative and superlative adjectives. So yung may ER and yung merong more 
Okay, of course, these are comparative adjectives. You'd use this if you are comparing two people, two things, two events, two places. Okay, in this case here, we're not really comparing. So that means X is not B at D. Hindi yan po pwede. Now, what do you think is the answer? Is it going to be A or is it going to be C? Your A here, this is an adjective. Sweet is an adjective. It is... um. A word that describes your noun or pronoun, no, it's it's a describing word. But when you say sweetly here, letter C mo, you usually when you have L-Y, these are adverbs, no? So adverbs to, your adverbs are words that can describe your verb, another adverb, or an adjective, no? So uh, ano kaya yung tamang sagot? The morning air smells blank in the garden than in the living room. You might argue that your answer should be sweetly because smells, of course, is a verb, okay? But here, the correct answer is letter A. That's letter A. The morning air smells sweet. Bakit hindi sweetly? Kahit na yung smell ay verb, no? Because, of course, your, your smell there, that is a sensing verb, okay? That's a sensing verb. That's a sense verb. I think this has already been discussed by Coach Paul, no? Sa kanyang uh, major shift with the English people, these are verbs that we use for sensing. So, for example, sound, feel, taste, watch, and smell. The cigarette smoke smells terrible. And if you have these types of verbs, you don't follow them with an adverb, no? You don't follow them with an adverb. You follow them with an adjective. So, in that case nga, yung ginagamit natin to follow your smells would be your adjective sweet. Hindi po sweetly, okay? So, hindi sweetly. We don't follow it with an, adge with an adjective. We follow, or with an adverb, we follow it with an adjective, okay? So, the correct answer here would be letter A, that's sweet, okay? So, letter A po, sweet ang tamang sagot. Okay, first tanong, ligwak agad, sabi ni Ma'am Vine Datiles. Okay, now we go to number two. This is still in English. Which word is the direct object in the sentence? Aaron brought, brought his mom souvenirs from each European city that he has been to. Is it letter A, Aaron? Letter B, mom? Letter C, souvenirs? Or letter D, city? What's your answer for number two? Mm-hmm. Ma'am Christina Sebastian, Ma'am Paad po, ako sa Gen Ed at Prof Ed na Google Classroom. Wala po tayong, uh, yung Google Classroom nyo po, yung Gen Ed and Prof Ed po natin is nasa Grow. At yung link po sa inyong Google Classroom nandun din po sa Grow. Okay, so there is um, some instructions there in your Grow. So if you are not added to Grow yet, no, hintay lamang po Ma'am Christina if uh, my husband is listening, he might be able to add you now. If not, then I will go back and check all the messages later. Okay, what is your answer for number two? Karamihan sa ating team YouTube, the answer is letter C. What about team Facebook? Team Facebook, ano po yung answer ninyo sa ating question number two? What's your answer for question number two, team Facebook? Okay, karamihan din, letter C yung kanilang sagot. And the correct answer, of course, would be letter C. We are looking for the direct object and not the indirect object. Now, what is the difference between your direct and your indirect object? Some verbs, sabi dito, can have two objects, usually a thing. Your direct object is something and your indirect object is a person. Okay, so for example, you have these questions or your sentences here. They've shown their friends their new flat. Okay, so their new flat, that is your direct object. That's an object. That's a thing. It's, it's a place in this case here. And of course, your the people, the persons are going to be your indirect object. So their friends, that's the indirect object. Direct object, that's their new flat. We bought our father some books. Okay, some books, that's your direct object. And the person, of course, that's your indirect object. Okay, so in this case here, we're still looking for the direct object. So we are looking for the object. Okay, not the person. It's not going to be the mom but it's going to be the souvenirs. Of course, it cannot be Aaron because Aaron here is the subject. He's not the object. And of course, it's not also the city because that is just uh, adding to the description. Uh, description lamang siya. And so the correct answer here would be letter C, souvenirs. That's for number two. Two is letter C. Now we go to number three. Doctor is to hospital as blank is to blank. Is it letter A, call to farm? Letter B, criminal to jail? Letter C, sports fan to stadium? Or letter D, professor to college? 
What's your answer? Maraming salamat, Sir Joven Pineda, for starting a watch party. Sa mga nagsastart po ng, ng watch party, maraming salamat po for, for also helping your fellow let takers. No? Si Ma'am Jamela Noor, maraming salamat po for starting a watch party. Ma'am Lizelle Villaruel Rosero, Sir Romnick Bistayan, maraming salamat po. Okay, Ma'am Mech, may message po ako sa inyo. Sana makita nyo. That's coming from Sir Romnick Bistayan. Okay, later po I will check uh, Sir Romnick. So personal uh, Facebook po ba ito, Sir Romnick? Ma'am Den, then me, maraming salamat po for starting a watch party. Mm-hmm. All right, what's your answer? Ma'am Maris Del Campo on YouTube. Maraming salamat po for your coffee. Okay, maraming salamat po para sa inyong ayuda. Thank you po. Okay, what's your answer here sa ating mga team YouTube, sa ating YouTubers? Karamihan sa inyo, yung, yung sagot nyo ay letter D. Uh, Sir Ralph Joseph Empainado. Hi, Ma'am Mech. Ask ko lang po kung need ba pa ba ng surgical gloves pag nag-take ng exam? At may possibility din po ba na mapospone ulit ang let? I think I have already posted the guidelines from uh, the PRC no, with regards to what you should wear during the, the day of your examination. No? So later po, well, I'll try to check Sir Ralph Joseph Empainado and repost it. And may possibility din po ba na mapospone ulit ang let? PRC lamang po makakasagot. We don't know. Um, so, dalangin natin sana ma-push through na. So, tingnan po natin. Okay, now, what do you think is the correct answer? A lot of you are answering letter D dito sa inyong team YouTube. Okay, what about team Facebook? Letter D din, karamihan ng inyong sagot. Okay, so doctor is to hospital as professor is to college. So letter D, that's the correct answer. So again, that's the correct answer, letter D. Paul, bakit letter D? Because you you have to, to look at the relationship between your two words here whenever you are answering lo your logic, no logic questions, abstract reasoning questions. You have to look at the relationship between your two given words so that you'll know the relationship that you're looking for for your answer. Now, doctor is to hospital. What's the relationship between that? You see doctors working in a hospital. Okay, it's doctors work in a hospital. Do cows work? Work in a farm? They don't. Do, do criminals work in a jail? They don't. Do sports fan work in a stadium? They don't. Okay, but of course, the correct answer, professors work in a college. It can be a university, it can be a school, but here, in your case, it's given as a college, and that is the correct answer. So again, whenever you are answering questions like this, you look at the relationship between the first two words, then that's how you get the correct answer, okay? We have a video on this, on analogy and logic, and find that both on YouTube and on Facebook. Now, number four, all, uh, read the sentence. Also, distracting a blind person's guide dog could put the owner in danger, so do not pet it. If you rewrite the sentence beginning with also, don't pet a blind person's guide dog because distracting blank, the next word should be, is it letter A, it, letter B, her, letter C, them, or letter D, him. What's the correct answer? Ma'am Apple May Mahumot, first timer on Team YouTube. Paki welcome naman si Ma'am Apple May. Ano po gagawin para maka-join ng Grow? After po ng ating discussion, Ma'am, eh, balikan niyo po yung um, ating instructions na sa beginning po ng ating video. Eh, or i-message niyo po sa FB page ng Guru Pinoy. Tama yan si Ma'am Tin Akabo. Shout out sa mga kaguro from Kapookan Leyte. That's coming from Sir Igano Ruel. Always watching from Bohol. Hello, Ma'am Josie Hetigan or Getigan. All right, now a lot of you on YouTube are answering letter A. Dito din sa ating team Facebook, karamihan sa inyo, your answer is also letter A. Okay, letter A then. Ma'am Elvi Alasan, thank you po for starting a watch party. And of course, the correct answer here is letter A. We are looking for the pronoun that can take the place of your noun here. In this case, your noun here is the dog. Okay, also don't pet a blind person's guide dog because distracting it 
Okay, again, we're looking for the pronoun that would take the place of your noun here. In this case, the noun is the dog. Okay, so letter A, it is the correct answer. Now we go to, the, to number five, very easy. Which symbol is used to open a document? Is it control O, control D, control V, or control S? What's the answer? Watching from Baguio City, ma'am or sir Claren Santonia. Hello po. First timer po ba? Kawai kawai sa ating mga first timer. Bago lang ako dito, Ma'am Al Rashid or Sir Al Rashid Dawood watching from Zamboanga, Sibugay. Welcome po to Team YouTube and to Guru Pinoy. Ma'am, si Ma'am uh, Lorena Namok, Ma'am, nakahide ho lagi yung inyong message. It's always held for review. Baka po dahil sa font na ginagamit po. Mamera Joy Bautista, watching from Tar Tarlac. Maganda gabi po. Sir Junri, newbie from CDO. Or Ma'am Junri. Good evening po and welcome. Now, a lot of you, of course, are answering letter A. And that is the correct answer. Okay, so control O, that is our... Uh, our shortcut, no, yung shortcut nyo, to open your document, okay? That's a command to open your document. Control O, Control D, I believe, is for delete, no? Pa pwede din siyang duplicate. Control V is for pasting. Control S is for saving. For your copy, that's going to be Control C. For your um, cut, that's going to be Control X, no? So lumalabas din po ito sila sa left, so dapat po alam nyo din yung mga shortcuts nyo when you are using your devices. Okay, so control O, letter A is the correct answer here. Now we go to number six. Paolo is terribly on edge. What does on edge mean? Is it letter A, eager? Letter B, nervous? Letter C, unprepared? Letter D, shrewd? Okay, what's the correct answer? Watching from Bacolod City, same here, baguhan din po. Ma'am Char Nevi Escanilla. Welcome, ma'am. Watching from Estancia, Iloilo. Hi, Ma'am Lope Dumagin or Sir Lope Dumagin. Watching from the City of Love. So that's also in Iloilo. Ma'am Sairil Kalugas. Uh, viewer na daw pala since then si Ma'am Clarence no, or Sir Clarence Antonia pero ngayon lang nakapag-comment. Alright, now a lot of you on Team YouTube are answering letter A sa ating question number 6. Watching and learning from Lucena City, Sir J.R. Andal Rio Veros. Good evening po. Ma'am Leia, meron din dito si Ma'am Leia. I cannot find. Ma'am Leia Bungkasan, first timer sa Team Facebook. Welcome po. Watching from Tanhai City. Yes, uh, Ma'am Lizelle Villaruel Lucero, may question dito. Ma'am, may final coaching po ba kayo? Yes, we are going to have our final coaching. Of course, that's going to be available for free for our growers. no? So, libre lahat sa ating growers. Yung ating um, pre-qualifying exam, libre lang din. That's also exclusive for our growers. And of course, there's also going to be a cash prize deal for our top notchers. Ma'am Jane Sol Caragay, good evening po. Thank you so much for starting a watch party. Okay, now what do you think is the correct answer here? When you say on edge, the correct answer is letter B. That's nervous, okay? It, it is like sitting on the edge of your chair, no? I am on edge, on the edge of my chair. That means you are very nervous. It's not eager, it's not unprepared, it's not shrewd. Ibig sabihin naman ang shrewd dito is uh, smart, no? So sharp in terms of thinking abilities, okay? But here, the correct answer, of course, will be letter B that's nervous. On edge means nervous. So letter B po, ang tamang sagot for question number six. Now we go to number seven. What figure of speech is a tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast? What figure of speech is used here? This is still in English. Hyperbole, letter B, irony, letter C, apostrophe, or letter D, personification. What do you think is the answer for question number seven? Ligwak ganern. Okay, ligwak. Ang daming naligwak sa Team YouTube. Newbie then sa Team YouTube, we have Ma'am Genesee. Ma'am Genesee? Sir Genesee? Welcome po. Watching from Tarlac City, Ma'am Jennifer Banoy, of course.
Mm -hmm. Watching from Qatar. Hello po. Sa Bahal Care. Ano nga yung uh, good evening or good afternoon, Sir Jeffrey Polito? Okay, now a lot of you in, on Team YouTube are answering letter D for question number seven. What about Team Facebook? Ganun din, letter D. Uh, karamihan yung inyong sagot. And of course, that will be the correct answer. A tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast. Okay, so this is personification. Of course, you know that whenever you say, pers we, you say personification, you are giving something, some characteristics of humans. Okay, so in this case here, you are giving a tree some human-like characteristics or humanly characteristics in saying that a tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast. And personification here, that's the correct answer. There is another variant to this question, meron variation ang question na ito selet no may question sa let na binigay ito a tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast and the question is what is referred to as the mouth in in um, that part of of the poem no a tree whose hungry mouth and of course your answer in that question the answer should be the roots okay the roots po yung ating sagot a tree whose hungry mouth is pressed against the earth's sweet flowing breast so that is personification Hyperbole, of course, that's pagmamalabis. That is exaggeration. No? Exaggeration yung hyperbole. Irony, you are putting together concepts or, or words that are opposite. No, So I, that's the irony. And of course, apostrophe, this one is called pagtawag in Filipino. This is calling uh, something that's, that does not exist or something or someone who's not around. No, Calling someone or something that's not around. So for example, you say, uh, when when Juliet on the balcony said, Romeo, oh Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? That would be apostrophe, okay? Apostrophe or pagtawag in Filipino. We have a video on this in our Gen Ed playlist on YouTube, no? About um, the different figures of speech, some examples, and of course, their Filipino translation. So panoorin niyo po yan kung hindi niyo pa po napapanood. Okay, so here again, number seven, letter D is the correct answer. Now we go to number eight, which policy of the state provides preferential attention to the, we to the welfare of the less fortunate members of the Philippine society? Is it letter A, Bill of Rights, letter B, Social Justice, letter C, Distributive Justice, or letter D, uh, Criminal Justice? Oh, this is Soksai. Okay, so Soksai na po ito. What do you think is the correct answer? Watching from Tablon, Cagayan de Oro City, Ma'am Elvi Alasan, thank you po for starting a watch party. Good evening po sa inyong lahat. Masal care. Ang good evening. Sabi ni Ma'am Ma Mary Jane Basobas Oko, no, in Arabic. Masal care. Mm-hmm. Sir Manuel Lavinia Jr. Maraming salamat po for starting a watch party, Sir Manuel. Ma'am Alter Amista, ganun din po. Maraming salamat for starting a watch party. She is watching from Sarangani Province. Thank you for sharing our video. For those of you who have shared our video, start a watch party, tag your friends. Maraming salamat po. Okay, now a lot of you on Team YouTube are answering letter B, social justice. What about uh, Team Facebook? Karamihan din letter B. Okay, which policy of the state provides preferential attention to the welfare of the less fortunate members of Philippine society? Anong ibig sabihin ng ating question? Preferential attention, meaning, eh, mas binibigyan ng atensyon yung mga nasa laylayan ng ating lipunan, no? Ika nga ni Vice President Lenny Robredo, no? So, preferential attention, that means hindi ka nakatanggap ng ayuda dahil meron kang kamag-anak or meron kang uh, kapatid, meron 
meron kang asawang nasa abroad, no? Nagtatrabaho ka sa munisipyo or uh, for whatever reason na meron kayong pension from SSS, hindi na kayo nakatanggap ng ayuda, no? So pinipili lamang ni Kapitan yung mga makakatanggap ng ayuda, nililista, pero minsan yung kapamilya ni Kap nandyan, no? Sa listahan, okay? So preferential attention, that is the meaning of our question here. So ano itong policy ng state na sinasabi na dapat eh, may preferential attention mas pagtuunan ng atensyon yung mga tao ng mas nangangailangan sa less fortunate members of the Philippine society. Is it the Bill of Rights? Is it letter B, social justice? Is it letter C, distributive justice? Or is this letter D, criminal justice? The correct answer here is letter C, distributive justice po ito. Okay, so again, distributive justice is the correct answer. Letter C po, hindi po social justice. Okay, it is not social justice. Is it, this is letter C, distributive justice. Let's take a look at our next slide. So when you say distributive justice here, this requires that the allocation of income, wealth, and power in society be evaluated in light of its effects on persons whose basic material needs are unmet. Okay, so uunahin muna yung mas nangangailangan. Kaya sila yung, kaya yung um, kapitbahay nyo, nakatanggap ng ayuda. So kung kayo, nakatanggap kayo ng ayuda, feeling nyo hindi kayo dapat nakatanggap ng ayuda, eh dapat sana ibinalik eh, nyo na lamang, no? Ishinare nyo lamang sa ibang tao. Okay? So that is distributive justice. I-distribute yung justice. Yung, kung sino man yung mas nangangailangan, doon yung mas malaking bahagi ng atensyon ng ating gobyerno. Okay? So now, you also have commutative justice. Yung commutative justice nyo naman po, it calls for fundamental fairness in all agreements and exchanges between in individuals or private social groups. This is justice that you can give to one person and you can also get from that person. Okay, that's commutative justice. And of course, we also have social justice. This implies that persons have an obligation to be active and productive participants in the life of society and that society has a duty to enable them to participate in this way. Okay, so that means Ito naman yung ating katungkulan sa ating society, sa ating government. And of course, in our society, we should also be treated in fairness. Okay, so that is from U.S. Bishops, Economic Justice for All in 1986, pages 68 to 71. So if you are looking at our graphic organizer here, again, you have the government here, you have the people Okay, you also have the the other people, no? So you have the people here at the bottom, and you have the government government here on the top of your triangle. Distributive justice is what we get from the government. Okay, so again, sinabi nga ng distributive justice mo, whoever needs more help, there that should be the ones who should who should get more attention. Okay, so that's distributive justice. Now, commutative justice, that's what you get from your fellow Filipino. That's also what you give your fellow Filipino. So that's commutative no, between people. And of course, social justice, ito yung katungkulan natin sa ating gobyerno, sa ating uh, society. We should be active participants in our society and of course in our society we should also be treated fairly so dapat eh, whatever right whatever privilege is given to one person kung may right siyang tumakbo bilang kapitan bilang mayor po pwede ka ding tumakbo no that's social justice all right so again distributive justice coming from the government commutative between people then social justice is what we give back to our society. Of course, the main goal is our com common good. Now, this is utilitarianism na sa ating isms of education. So again, your answer there would be distributive justice. Now we go to number nine. What figure of speech is used in this line from the Lord's Prayer? Give us this day our daily bread. Is it letter A, synecdoche? Letter B, metaphor? Letter C, metonymy? Or letter D, simile? What's the answer? Mm-hmm. Ano kaya yung tamang sagot? Ma'am, Ma'am Danica de Los Santos, nakapag-join na po ba kayo sa inyong major? Um, I've seen someone who was asking for, paano po mag-register ng English major, ma'am? That's from Ma'am Mary Jane Ricones. Mag-send po kami, kayo ng message sa ating Facebook page, ma'am. Our majorship is 1,000 pesos, no? So kahit po ngayon po kayo mag-join, ngayon lamang po kayo mag-join, makikita niyo pa rin po all the previous materials that we have. Okay? If your major is English, um, you're already taking set three, 
So you can still go back to set one and set two. Nandun pa rin po sa inyong, sa inyong Google Classroom. All right. Now, letter A, karamihan ang sagot dito sa ating team YouTube. Ma'am Rufina Bation, again, uh, Ma'am Mek, pwede po ba kasali sa agri-fishery freebies? Again, balikan niyo po yung videos natin, General Science with Doc H. Dalawang videos po yon at meron po tayong instructions doon. Okay, karamihan sa ating team YouTube, the answer is A. What about sa ating team Facebook? Letter C. Sir Adolfo Pimentel Mari, maraming salamat po for starting a watch party. Mm -hmm. Okay, sabi ni Ma'am Ederlina, Supnet Ortega dito, mali yung sagot sa reviewer na binasa ko. Ano ba yan? Yan pala ang sagot. Distributive justice pala ang sagot. Kasi dyan, Ma'am, social justice. Okay, so again, uh, I've always been telling you, be very careful when you're to, you're choosing the reviewees and uh, the, re the reviewees, no, uh, no, the reviewers, no, yung mga reviewer na binibili or yung mga uh, kung sino pong pinapakinggan nyo, be very careful. Dapat po yung explain na maayos. Dapat po tama yung concept behind the explanation. Okay? So, minsan kasi imbis na makatulong, eh, mas nakaka-confuse pa. Uh, Ma'am Genesee or Sir Genesee, first timer si Ma'am or si Sir, no? Meron po tayong major shift for social studies. Mag-send po kayo ng uh, message sa ating Facebook page later. Okay, now meron ng debate dito. Ano kaya yung tamang sagot? What figure of speech is used in this line from the Lord's Prayer? Give us this day our daily bread. And the correct answer here would be letter C. Metonymy is the correct answer. Okay, metonymy po ang tamang sagot. Not letter A, sinekduke. Not letter B, metaphor or simile. Now let's take a look at um, the explanation. Bakit ba metonymy at hindi sinekduke, hindi metaphor, hindi simile? Now remember that you use metaphor in Similarly, when you are comparing objects, people, persons, events, whatever, you know, you are comparing two entities. That's going to be metaphor, okay? So metaphor po yan if you are comparing two entities. Now, the difference between simile and metaphor is that when you use simile, you are using words like like and as, okay? There is no, the use of words like and as. Metaphor mo naman, there is no use of the terms like and as, no? So pareho po sila ng function, but they are not the same in the way that we use them. Now, the structure is not the same. So again, simile uses like and as, metaphor does not. Now, what is the difference between your synecdoche and metonymy? Why is metonymy the correct answer here and not synecdoche? We go to the next slide for that. When you say metonymy, this uses a related word or object. For example, you say her mother tongue is English. Tongue here, of course, would mean language, okay? Her mother language, her native language, or first language would be English. Now, when you say synecdoche, this uses a part to represent a whole or a whole to represent the, the part, no? So a part to a whole or vice versa. Example, you say we need more hired hands for the harvest. Hired hands, of course, that would be, uh, that would represent your, your workers, no? And hands, of course, hands, of course, are part of your workers. Now, uh, one thing that I can give you as a clue, no? An easy way to remember this is that my mommy, which represents metonymy, my mommy is really related to me, but my sin, sinekduke, is part of me, okay? So my mommy is related to me, but my sin is part of me. Mommy, again, that's metonymy, related lamang, but sin is part of me. Sinekduke, eh, parte. No? So, parte ng isang katawan. In Filipino, sinekduke is pagpapalit sa klaw. And ang metonymy, metonymy nyo naman ay pagpapalitawag. Okay? So, again, go back to your figures of speech na video sa Guru Pinoy. No? Meron na po doon mga examples at meron na din pong um, translation in Filipino. Sa so, makatawid, ang ating tamang sagot there would be metonymy. Okay? So, metonymy po ang ating tamang sagot. Alright? Now, we go to... Number 10. Ang mga salitang hilaw at hanay ay nagtataglay ng ponemang segmental na is it letter A, ponema, letter B, diptongo, letter C, morpema, or letter D, cluster. What's the correct answer? Sir Jeffrey Hippolito, math meron po. 
Meron po tayong math major. If you'd like to enroll in uh, Gen Ed, Prof Ed, and Math, that's only 1,250 po. Ma Mercedita Makapagal, wala po tayong majorship for TLE. So what you can do po again is to watch the videos, the two videos, General Science with Doc H, and nandun po yung ating instructions on how you can get your freebies lamang po yung meron tayo sa TLE. Okay, now a lot of you here on Team Facebook are answering letter B. May tanong dito si Ma'am Nishayka Sekang Kalbi. Guys, paano nyo nakuha yung badge nyong top fan? Okay, so anyone who's a top fan can answer that. Si Ma'am Love Sardinia ay top fan. Si Sir John John Leong, top fan. Ma'am Lizelle Bolivar Liboon is a top fan. Ma'am Jen Degala, top fan din. Okay, so may, may additional information dito. Si Sir Ariel Carballo Malusay. Colgate is sometimes called toothpaste. Okay, metonymy. Your toothpaste pala is sometimes called col Colgate, no? So metonymy siya, tama yan. Okay, what's your answer? Mm hmm. Sir, one sarap. Good evening po. Magkano po kapag Prof. Ed po? Wala po tayong Prof. Ed na separate, sir. Meron po tayong Gen Ed Prof. Ed. That's grow. That's only 500 po. Agri and Fishery, Ma'am Cyril Kalugas. Again, you go to our YouTube videos, General Science with Doc H. Nandun po yung ating instructions. Okay, now a lot of you on team YouTube are answering letter B. Ganon din sa ating team Facebook, letter B din. Ma'am Raquel Kinet, mag-send po kayo mamaya ng, uh, mamaya ng uh, message po dito sa Facebook page natin. The correct answer, of course, would be letter B, diptongo. Okay, when you say ponema, ito yung makabuluhang unit ng tunog, no? Morpema naman, makabuluhang unit ng ng uh, Salita, no? So, these are units, units sa ating language, sa ating, sa ating wika. Diptongo and cluster, usually, eh, um, nakoconfused kayo kung anong diptongo, anong naman yung cluster, no? So, let's take a look at our slide. When you say diptongo, ito yung may mga uh, patinig at katinig na magkasunod. So, araw, bahay, unggoy, tulay, cake. Okay? So, that would be your diptongo. Ang cluster mo naman ay may magkakasunod na na katinig sa iisang ano na tawag diyan sa iisang syllable no sa, sa isang syllable mo so blusa prutas chinelas braso grupo okay so that would be your cluster so that is the difference between your diphthongo and cluster so sa makatuwid po yung ating sagot dito would be diphthongo hilaw at hanay so pareho silang diphthongo diphthongo po ang ating tamang sagot hindi po cluster Okay? Now we go to number 11. Ang salitang utol ay mauuri bilang isang letter A, balbal, letter B, kolokyal, letter C, dialecto, letter D, lalawiganin. What's the correct answer? Ma'am Danica uh, De Los Santos. Ah, so hindi pa kayo nag-enroll, ma'am. Gen Ed Prof. Ed pa lamang. It's very important that you enroll in your majorship. Again, inuulit ko po na... Napaka-importante pong mag-enroll din kayo sa inyong majorship dahil of course, that's 40% of your rating. So 40% po yan ang inyong rating. Kung Prof. Ed and Gen. Ed lang po, that would be, Ma'am Lorena, Namok, 500 po. That would be grow. Sa grow po yan. Ano po ang grow? Sabi ni Sir Wilford Sabelia, that's Gurung Pinoy Review Online Work Group. Uh, that's an FB group po. FB group po natin for Gen. Ed and Prof. Ed. Mm -hmm. So, napakahirap ng Filipino. What do you think is the correct answer? When I took the left, Filipino din yung uh, pinakanahihirapan mong subject. Okay, so what do you think is the correct answer here? Balbal, kolokyal, dialecto, lalawiganin. What's your answer, team? Facebook. 
Ma'am Jensen Albaran Ruiz, thank you po for sharing our video and starting a watch party. Maraming salamat po. Okay, sabi dito ni Ma'am Ver Veronica Sagun Andaya, nagiging top fan po ang isang member or viewer dito pag active po kayong nasagot sa mga questions dito. Opinion ko lang po. Okay, Sir Kenechi Lorbes, ma'am, nakabayad na po ako. Pwede po pa-add sa GC po. Later po, sir, uh, we will be adding you. Physical science major po, wala po tayong majorship for physical science major, ma'am Grace 187 Rivas. We do have a lot of materials that are for free for your major. So again, um, yung ating po major lamang na merong lecturer is English, Math, Social Science, Biology, Filipino and MAPE. Okay, so yan po yung anim na meron tayong lectures. No? For the rest of you, Values Ed, AgriFish, TLE, and Physical Science, wala po tayong lectures. No? But we have our freebies para po makuha nyo yung freebies. E panoorin nyo po yung General Science with Doc H na videos natin. Dalawang videos po yan sa YouTube. Nandun po yung ating instructions. Okay, the correct answer here, of course, should be letter A, balbal. Okay, so balbal po ang tamang sagot. Alam naman natin na yung dialecto at lalawiganin, these are languages, these are, uh, ito yung wika muna na buo dahil sa, sa lokasyon, no? sa location, or dahil sa region, no? sa regions, and different uh, places in our country. So dialecto, ito yung dialect mo, ang, ang karaniwang ginagamit sa, sa inyong pang-araw-araw pang na pananalita, no? sa so, maaring uh, hiligay nun. For example, Cebuano. Cebuano is already considered a language, no? Pwede pa rin siyang uh, ma matuturing na dialecto, no? So, yung mga uh, iba't ibang klase ng dialects na meron tayo sa Pilipinas, napakarami. Lalawigan din, of course, this is used in one province, okay? Now, your balbal and your kolokyal, ito yung mga ginagamit natin pang araw-araw, but of course, yung kolokyal mo, eh, mas formal kesa sa balbal, no? Balbal nga in, na ituturin natin itong pinakamababang level ng wika. So, looking at the, set, the, the word that we are given here, utol, of course, the correct answer is balbal. Hindi lahat ng tao gumagamit ng balbal no hindi siya napaka common or hindi hindi siya mas hindi siya uh, kasi common ng mga colloquial words natin po pwedeng kapatid yung gamitin no so utol um, that would be balbal balbal is a correct answer sometimes we we refer to balbal as street words okay so street words so 11 balbal po ang tamang sagot now we go to number 12 ang, ang epikong isinali ni Padre Jose Castaño sa Tulang Kastila na inilathala sa Espanya noong 1895 ay nahihinggil sa kauna-unahang tao sa kabikulan is it letter A ibalon letter B hudhud at, at alim, letter C, darangan or darangan, or letter D, maragtas, ibalon. Ibalon ba or ibalon? Uh, social Science, Sir Wilford G. Sabelia, mag-send lamang po kayo ng message sa ating Facebook page. Uh, sabi ni Ma'am Karen Cortaga dito, hirap mag-self-review sa TLE, Ma'am. Walang kagaya nito na ginagawa mo na nag-explain talaga na maayos. Uh, there is a conversation there sa ating TLE Google Classroom. No? Meron po silang group chat na yata. Meron po silang phenom na group chat. So what I can suggest you, dahil I have tried explaining yung TLE, no? na kapag try ako ng isang set ng TLE, napakahirap. But I've tried all my best to really explain it and sobrang hirap na mga questions nyo no? dahil may question doon, for example, about sa type ng knife at lahat ng klase ng knife, eh, explain mo. Meron question doon about table setting, lahat ng klase ng table setting, eh, explain mo. Meron question doon about the different sauces, okay? Different sauce. So lahat ng klase ng sauce, eh, explain mo din, no? So, napakahirap talaga at napakalawak kasi ng inyong TLE na review. Wala kami makitang ganun ka well-rounded na TLE lecture, no? So, hindi... Uh, as I've told you, we put our trust to our lecturers, so hindi kami po pwedeng mag-choose ng kahit sino, sino lamang, no, ng mga medyo pucho, hindi po po pwede, no. So we we uh, look at the qualifications, and of course, these are people that we personally know, dahil uh, gusto namin talaga makatulong sa inyo, gusto namin makapasa kayo, no, hindi po pwedeng kung sino-sino na lamang na kinuha namin sa kantor, kung sino-sino na lamang na kahit na teacher, eh, hindi 
hindi makapag-expound at hindi makapag-explain, hindi alam ko anong sinasabi. And so, we cannot vouch for your TLE lecture na wala kami kilala na well-rounded at uh, talagang maayos mag-explain. And so, uh, we cannot offer that to you. And so, what I suggest is you form your group. Meron na yata group chat si na Ma'am Jeremy, no? Uh, you form your group. And kung sino yung uh, medyo mas maraming alam sa area na to, eh mag-share po kayo doon. No? Mag-share kayo. Or po pwedeng mag-group chat kayo or mag-video call kayo. Na po pwede po yan. Gawin nyo po yan. Eh, or uh, po pwede ning i-divide nyo lahat ng areas at meron mag-research in this area. Tapos i-share nyo po. Okay? So that's everything that I can I can offer, ma'am. Uh, but we have so many materials na nandun sa ating ating freebies sa ating Google Classroom for TLE. I know that you have found a lot of materials there. Okay, so yan, si Kapitan Emerson Barbosa, pasuyo naman po sa GC ng TLE Creator. Sali po, nandun po, nagko-comment po sila dun sa inyong Google Classroom. So balikan niyo po yung Google Classroom nyo later at tingnan niyo po. Okay, so we go back to number 12, ang epikong isinali ni Padre Jose Castaño sa Tulang Castila at inilatala sa Espanya noong, uh, noong 1895 ay nahingil sa kauna-unahang tao sa kabikulan. The correct answer here would be letter A, Ibalon. Okay, so letter A po ang tamang sagot, hindi hudhud at alim, hindi daranggan or darangan at hindi din marantas. So again, for your TLE major, sa mga TLE natin dito, ang dami niyong TLE, Punta po kayo mamaya sa ating YouTube channel and watch the two videos that we have, General Science with Doc H, and you follow the instructions there so that you can be added to your Google Classroom. Doon po sila nag-uusap, okay, para ma-i-add po kayo sa inyong groups. Okay, ang dami pong TLE, um, TLE major dito sa ating team Facebook din. All right, now let's take a look at your explanation. Yung Ibalon or Ibalon, epiko ng Bicol, tawag sa rehiyon ng Bicol, matandang epiko na Ibalon na isinalaysay ng isang makatang manlalakbay na si Kadugnong. Okay, tandaan niyo po yan, na isinali ni Father Jose Castaño. Nalathala sa Madrid sa tulong ni Wences Lauritana. Well, of course, if you are in GROW, kung member po kayo ng GROW, yung Gen Ed Prof Ed natin na Facebook page, uh, Facebook group, these things, all these materials can be found there later. So, hindi nyo na po kailangan mag-take down ng notes. Now, darangga naman ay epiko ng Mindanao. May 25 kabanata at natititik ito sa wikang Maranao. Pinakamahabang epiko ng Pilipinas. Okay, so tandaan nyo po yan, darangan or nanggan. Ito yung pinakamahabang epiko sa Pilipinas. Epikong bayan hinggil sa pakikipagsapalaran ng mga bayani ng bumbaran. Pahimig na tono ng pagsasalita na susulat sa wikang Maranao. Kinilala ng UNESCO bilang masterpiece of the oral intangible heritage of humanity. Okay, so again, darangan. Ito po yung pinakamahabang epiko ng Pilipinas. Of course, when you say epiko, ito yung mga katutubong um, kwento natin ukol sa, or tungkol sa mga heroes, no? So, mga superpowers. You also have hudhud, ang hudhud at alim, no? Epiko ng ipugaw, karaniwang inaawit kapag ipinagdiriwang ang anihan. Ipinaliliwanag dito ang pagkalikha sa daigdig at inilalal inilalarawan ang mga kadakilaan at kaluwalhatian ng mga unang pangyayari sa kasaysayan ng kanilang lahi. So this is for ipugaw, hudhod, no? Inaawit uh, uh, kapag ipinagdiriwang ang anihan. Now we also have alim steel for ipugaw, nagsasalaysay ng isang panahon na panahong ang lupain ay saganang sagana, nagsasalaysay sa buhay ng kanilang bathala at mga kagilak gilalas na pangyayari. Kalimitang ginagamit sa mga ritual na gawain lamang ang alim ay ginagamit para sa mga namatay, may sakit at ritual ng paggawa at paglagay ng hagabi, isang malaking bang bangko. Okay, so that's hudud at alim. So again, hudud po ay during anihan. Yung alim mo naman po pwedeng sa patay, sa mga ritual, no, ginagamit yung alim. And of course, maragtas, ito naman yung epiko ng panay, epikong nasusulat sa wika ay hiligay non iraya, kasaysayan ang katumbas ng salitang maragtas. This one would include the story of Marikudo and Mariwantiwan and how they have sold they have sold panay to the ten Bornean datus. So ito po yung ating maragtas. Maragtas in Filipino means kasaysayan, history. 
Okay, now we also have, I've also included some other epics here. Biag Nilamang, of course, at still Ilocano. Bantugan, Indarpatra at Sulaiman, Bidasari. These are all from Mindanao. Tuwaang is uh, the epic of the Manobo people. And Agyu, that would be the epic for Cotabato. Okay, so tandaan niyo po to. Lahat po to ay nanggagaling. Ay, or lumalabas sa left. Mm -hmm. Okay, now again, if you are a member of GROW, no, sa ating growers, Jen, Ed, and Prophet, lahat po ito makikita nyo sa GROW, even those that you have missed, the live streams natin na you have missed, all these things can be found in GROW. Now we go to number 13, still Filipino, matulog ka na bunso, ang inamoy nasa malayo, may putik, may balaho, hindi ko masundo, ito ay isang halimbawa ng letter A, Diona, letter B, Oyayi, letter C, Soliranin, or letter D, Kumintang. What's the answer? Ma'am Jane, subing-subing. Ma'am, hanggang kailan yung promo nyo po? Wala naman po nakalagay kung hanggang kailan, no? I'm not sure. But please do send a message to our Facebook page as soon as you can po. Okay? As soon as you can, mag-message po kayo po. Pwede din po kayo magtanong doon. Sir Raven Renzo Fernandez, maraming salamat po for starting a watch party. Uh, Ma'am Jensen Albaran Ruiz, paano po sumali sa GC? Again, please do send a message to, uh, to uh, Guru Pinoy po. Pagkatapos po ng live stream na to, the same page where you are watching the live stream now, that's where you can send us a message. Okay, kayang-kaya nyo na yan, mga uh, TLE majors, no? Kayang-kaya nyo yan. Ayan, si Sir, si Sir J.R. Andal Rioveros, our top fan, no? So, gustong mag-gagawa daw ng group chat, si Sir J.R. Dito sa team Facebook. Okay, what do you think is the correct answer for this question that we have here? Oh, ito daw yung madalas na ginagawa. Yan, madalas kong ginagawa, Ma'am T, nagpapatulog ng bunso, sabi ni Kapitan Emerson Barbosa. The correct answer here, of course, would be letter B, Oyayi or Hele, no? Hele or Oyayi, not Diona, not Solirani, not Kumintang. Matulog ka na bunso, ang inamoy nasa malayo, may putik, may balaho, hindi ko masundo. Okay, so letter B, Oyayi or awi pang patulog ng bata. So these are part, or that's part of ang... Um, ng ating mga awiting bayan or yung mga tinatawag nating kantahin. So here on the screen, you have the different parts of uh, awiting bayan. No? So yung uyayi po ay awit panghele, pangpatulog ng bata. Yung kundiman ay awit ng pag-ibig. Pareho po sila ng balita. Okay? Yung um, kaibahan lamang po, yung kundiman ay galing sa Katagaluga, no? Tagalog region. And of course, yung awit ng pag-ibig mo naman na balita ay galing sa Visayas, okay? sa kundiman at balita. Dungaw ay awit sa patay ng mga Ilocano. Diona, awit sa pamamanhikan o kasal. Soliranin, awit sa pamamangka. Maluay ay awit sa sama-samang paggawa. Kutang-kutang naman ay karaniwang inaawit sa lansangan. Awit ng pakikidigma, tinatawag na kumintang. At awit sa pagdakila ng may kapal, that would be dalit. Okay? So, mga lumalabasin po ito sa let, no? So, if you are in grow, I will be posting this later. There's no need for you to uh, copy this. All these slides can be found on grow later. So, again, if you are still not part of grow, it's very important for you to become a part of grow. It's very important that you are guided properly or guided correctly in your gen and profit. So, what are you waiting for? You join grow. It's very cheap. It's only 500 pesos. That's a one-time payment. It's not a monthly payment. I have seen some other people asking you to pay 3,000, 5,000, 6,000, no? Uh, in our case, it's only 500 for Gen Ed Prof Ed. Okay? And all the things, all the rest of the things that we've already discussed, you can still find in Grow. So kahit ngayon lamang po kayo mag-join, lahat po nandun na sa Grow. 
Okay, so your answer again is Uyayi. Now we go to number 14, still Filipino. Hila mo'y tabak, ang bulaklak ng inig sa paglapit mo. This is from the poem Tutubi, or no, this is titled Tutubi, ni Gonzaga F. Flores. Ang tula ay isang tanaka, letter B, haiku, letter C, epico, or letter D, uyayi. What's the answer? Uh, Sir Wilford, Gisabella, meron po ba materials to review? Again, all these materials can be found in Gropo. Lahat po ng ating mga materials, these are actual left items, no? So lahat po nandun sa Grow. Hindi lamang po ito, lahat po ng mga feedback ng ating estudyante, lahat po ng mga secret materials nandun po sa Grow. Okay, is it haiku? Is it tanaka or tanka? Epico or Uyayi? What's your answer? Mm -hmm. Sir Alvin Santiago, where can I send a receipt? You can send it through our Facebook page. Mag-message uh, po kayo dito sa ating Facebook page. Okay, and the correct answer here, of course, would be haiku. Okay, so haiku po ang tamang sagot dito. Hila mo'y tabak, ang bulaklak ng inig sa paglapit mo. Your haiku is a one form of your Japanese poem, no? And it has three lines. And the syllables, yung kada syllable sa kada linya would be 575. Okay, so 575. Kung atin pong ikakount, no? Hila mo'y tabak. That's five. So, second line mo, that should be seven. Ang bulaklak na nginig. That's seven. And of course, the last line should also have five syllables. Sa paglapit mo. Okay? And so, that's five, seven, five. That means haiku is the correct answer. Tanka is not the, the answer. Epico, of course, we've already had examples in this. Your epico, these are stories about extraordinary people, no? So, superpowers, superheroes natin, epico. Oyai, of course, this is a song we use sa paghele, sa pagpapatulog ng bata. Now, what is the difference between tanka and the haiku? No? So, haiku again, there are 17 syllables total. total. There's three lines, so five, seven, five. And sa inyo namang um, tanaka, or tanka in English, there's 31 syllables total. So, that's five, seven, five, seven, seven. Okay, so example natin dito ng haiku mo, when will I be whole again, again and not think of you every day, all day. So that's 575, that's a haiku. Ito naman yung halimbawa natin sa ating tanka, 57577, every now and then, that's five. It hits me like it's the first seven, then time I realized uh, time I realized I, so that's five, would never see you again. That's seven. And each time it breaks my heart. That's also seven. So five, seven, five, seven, seven. So high kupo, five, seven, five, 17 syllables total, then 31 syllables total for your tanka. So tanka, um, one way that I can help you remember this is that tanka is longer, okay? So, bakit mo pa, bakit mo pa pahahabain kung pwede mo namang paikliin lamang, no? Kung pwedeng 575 lamang, 17 syllables lamang, bakit mo pa pahahabain sa 31 syllables? Tanka, okay? Tanga ka, no? Tanka, okay? So, tanka is longer than your haiku. So, that's the difference. But both of these are Japanese poems. Now, we go to number 15. We are in the category of math. Okay, so math po. What is the largest prime number less than 100? 91, 93, 95, or 97? Okay, what's your answer for this question here? This math. Okay, is it 91, 93? 95 or 97? Mm. Ma'am R.C. Diwas, thank you for tagging a friend. Sir Nefi Tejano, thank you Paul for sharing our video. 
Ma Maria Lucy, thank you for starting a watch party. Sir Joven Pineda, thank you for starting a watch party. Maraming salamat po. Pupwede po yung Metro Bank fund transfer po. That's a question coming from Sir Raven Renzo Fernandez. Yes, pupwede po. Okay, now a lot of you here are answering letter D. Sa ating team Facebook, sa ating team YouTube naman. Ganun din, letter D din ang tamang sag ang, ang karamihan sagot. Uh, and of course, letter D is the correct answer here. We're looking for a prime number and these are or this is the list of our prime numbers from 1 to 100, no? So you have 2, 3, 5, 7 and so on. Now remember that when you see or when you say prime numbers, these are numbers whose factors are just one and itself, no? So ito yung mga numbers natin na yung factors niya is just one and itself. When you say factors, again, these are numbers that you multiply to get a certain product. So for you to get two, the only factors that you have would be two times one, di ba? So three, that would be three times one, or one times three, five, that would be just one times seven. Okay, so these are your prime numbers from 1 to 100. So the correct answer, the biggest would be 97. There is a variation of this question in the left. My question po sa left, how many prime numbers are there from 1 to 100? And so your answer would be 25. Okay, yung, yung sagot niyo po doon would be 25. In that common question in the left, how many prime numbers are there from 1 to 100? Your answer would be 25. Okay, so that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay, so 25 po yung sagot doon. All right, we go to 16. The product of two whole numbers is 36 and the ratio is 1 is to 4. Which of these is the larger number? Okay, what do you think is the correct answer here? Is it letter A, 2, letter B, 3, letter C, 9, or letter D, 12? We are looking for the larger number here, larger number. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the correct answer for question number 16 na po tayo? Sir Ramil Quambot, thank you po for sharing our video. Maraming salamat po. Okay, what do you think is the correct answer for number 16? And kaya yung tamang sagot dito sa ating question number 16. Uh, the product of two whole numbers is 36, and the ratio is 1 is to 4. Which of these is the larger number? No, karamihan sa inyo, ang sagot nyo ay letter D, that's 12. Let's take a look at our explanation, okay? So letter D, of course, that would be the correct answer, okay? So you are given a ratio of 1 is to 4 here, no? You are given a ratio of 1 is to 4. So we can say that 1A times 4A is equal to 36. This is given by, um, in the first part of our question. The product of two whole numbers is 36. So their product, if you multiply them, their product would be 36. That's why we multiply them here. And we used 1 is to 4 because this is given as the ratio, Okay, that's given as a ratio. That means 1A times 4A, when you multiply them, that would be equal to 36. Now, looking at your equation here, 1A times 4A, we can multiply these two. So 1 times 4 again, that would be 4. And A times A, that would be A squared. Okay, so you are given 4A squared equals 36. Okay, so that's 4A squared equals 36. Now, you can see that you can actually divide both sides by 4, okay, to simplify your, your equation. Also, you divide this by 4, that would give you 1. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And 36 divided by 4, that would give you 9. Okay, so we are given 1 a squared or just a squared equals 9. So again, we divided this both sides of your equation by 4 because 4, of course, is the GCF of your 4 and 36. So again, 4 divided by 4 is 1. 36 divided by 4, of course, that would give us 9. Okay, so now we are left 
with a squared equals 9. No? So 1a squared, or we can just simply write that as a squared equals 9. Now, for us to get the value of a, since we have a square here, no? we have a power of 2, we need to square root. No? Kunin natin yung square root of both sides of your equation. So this would be our equation now, the square root of a squared equals the square root of 9. So now, we can already... Uh, say that your answer is 3, okay? So, bucket 3. When you square this, you can eliminate your square there. And, of course, you can also eliminate your square root. We are left with just A equals square root of 9. And, of course, we know that square root of 9 would be 3. Now, 3 po, yung sagot natin for A, no? Yung 3 po is yung value ng ating A. The value of A is 3. So, now, we are looking for the larger number. So, for us to get the larger number for A, that would be 4A, no? Larger number natin dito is 4A. We multiply 4 by the value of A, which is 3. So, 4 times 3, that would give you 12, okay? So, 12 po ang tamang sagot dito. Okay, so 12 again is the correct answer for question number 16. Now again, if you are in grow, you can find these explanations there later and the slides there later. Now we go to number 17. If the ratio of the number of carabaos, pigs, and cows on a farm is 5 is to 1 is to 2 and there are 48 animals in all, how many of them are pigs? Okay, we're looking for the number of pigs. What's your answer? Is it letter A, 2, letter B, 4, letter C, 6, letter D, 8? What's the answer for question number 17? Uh-huh. Okay, so Sir Joven Pineda, mamek, hanggang ilan pong question ng Gen Ed po natin ngayon? 20 items po. Uh, thank you, Ma'am Loyalin, the Kipel, for answering the question. 20 items po tayo for Gen Ed today. So usually when we have our live stream now, we have 20 items for Gen Ed. Tomorrow po, please do not forget that your quizzes link can be found on our Facebook page, no? Starting uh, 7 a.m. po pwede na pong answeran uh, until 7 p.m. Huwag nyo, huwag nyo pong hintay na 7 p.m. at baka masaraduhan po kayo, hindi na po kayo makasagot. Okay, so your quizzes link can be found on our Facebook page. So it's very important that you follow our Facebook page. If you can download the app, our app, you can also do that so that it's going to be very easy for you to find our updates. And so we are going to be posting your, your quizzes link for Prof. Ed tomorrow, 20 items Prof. Ed. At 7 a.m., you can already start uh, answering that until 7 p.m. And of course, 7.30 p.m. tomorrow night, we are going to have our discussion for professional education, still 20 items. Now, again, remember, on Saturday and Sunday next week, wala po tayong live stream, no? Yung live stream po natin ay imumove forward on Thursday and Friday. That's only for next week. The rest of the weekends, ganun pa rin po yung ating schedule. And of course, your majoring, you still have your sets and your discussion Saturday, Sundays. Alright, no, karamihan sa inyo dito, ang sagot nyo ay letter C sa ating team Facebook and uh, sa ating team YouTube. Sa ating team Facebook, ganun din. Hello, ma'am. Galing kay ma'am K. Kabuyo. Hello, ma'am. Pagtatlo po kasama major, 1,200 po. It's actually 1,250, ma'am K. Kabuyo, but try to send a message to Guru Pinoy. Uh, po, pwede naman po laging pag-usapan. Again, it's very easy for us to decide. Guru Pinoy can decide very fast as to what uh, things we can offer you as to the prices, whether we are going to have a promo or not. Because in Guru Pinoy, we don't have any partners. It's only me and my husband. Okay, so it's very easy for us to just decide what to do, how to help you. No, hindi po maraming pwede pagdaanan yung mga paggawa ng decision. So if you have uh, questions like that, just try to send a message at baka po pwede pong i-consider. Okay, now, of course, the correct answer here would be letter C. That's six. Okay, letter C po, six. Now, we've had several items about this, no? And several items like this in our previous live streams. Now, what we do again is first you get the total ratio. Kunin muna yung sum ng inyo ratio. So that would be five plus one plus two, giving you eight. Okay, so total ratio is 8. Now, the next step that you should do is to divide the total number of animals here 
the n given by the total number of ratios. So that would be 48 divided by 8, no? So again, yung 8 natin, kinuha natin dito sa total ratio natin. Okay, so that's 48 divided by 8, giving us 6. So that means 6 yung kada unit, no? Now, you are given here, 5 is to 1 is to 2. Yung 5 mo would be for carabaos, yung pigs mo would be 1, and cow small would be two. So for you to get the number for the, the actual number for each animal, what you do is you multiply the parts here by the answer that we have here. So how many carabaos do you have? That's five times six. So that would be 30. How many cows would you have? That's two times six. That would be 12. How many pigs do you have? That is our question. That's just one times six. Kaya six po ang ating sagot. Okay, so letter C, six ang tamang sagot. Okay, now we go to number 18. A water tank contains 8 liters when it is 20% full. How many liters does it contain when it is 75% full? What's your answer? 15, letter A, letter B, 30, letter C, 58, or letter D, 60? Ligwa, ganon. It really hurts. Mm-hmm. Nakakapanik ba, sabi dito, yung kwentuhan dito sa team YouTube natin, nagpapanik sila dahil sa timer, no? sa timer ng ating quizzes. Now again, our purpose there is not to let you panic, but our purpose of course is to train you because as you know, your let is time bound. No? Napaka-igsi po ng oras nyo sa let. No? From what I can remember, you start from 8 o'clock and then you end by 1 o'clock. So 8 o'clock to 1 o'clock, that's your gen end. No? I'm not sure if it's still the same. Sa, sa inyong case, no? Kung ganun pa rin. So, from 8 o'clock to 1 o'clock, Gen Ed Prof Ed po yan. From my experience, the, they gave us Gen Ed first, no? So, Gen Ed muna ibibigay sa inyo. And of course, after you answer Gen Ed, ibalik nyo sa kanila yung inyong Gen Ed na answer sheet, uh, your, your answer sheet, yes, in your questionnaire. And then you are given your Prof Ed. And then you, of course, finish your Prof Ed. That's until 1 o'clock. Then after that, you can go out for your lunch. Then you can come back at 2 o'clock for your major ship, no? For your major ship, if you have a major. If wala naman, Gen Ed, Prof Ed ka lang, B Ed ka, po pwede ka nang umuwi. Okay? At magdasal, magsindi ng kandila, maghintay na. Um, announcement ng results. Okay? So, relax lang kayo dapat. It's uh, what you call grace under pressure. Isipin nyo na lamang na sumasali kayo sa Miss You, sa Miss Universe na no? grace under pressure dapat. Hinga na malalim. So, meron tayong mga tinatawag na breathing technique, no? So, uh, maaari natin yung isama sa ating final coaching. So, maaari natin. We, we haven't drafted your program yet for your final coaching, but uh, rest assured that we will do our best to help you, to help you prepare, not only through our discussion, but uh, some other hints that can help you really feel relaxed and answer to the best of your ability during your licensure exam for teachers. Yes, ang tama yan. Sabi ni Ma'am Buena Fiporol, magdasal talaga. Okay, now number 18 here, a water tank contains 8 liters when it is 20% 20 full. And how many, so how many liters does it contain when it is 75% full? Now, in this type of question, you can just easily get, get the answer through ratio and proportion. Pwede po siyang ratio and proportion. The answer here, kanamiyan sa inyo, your answer is letter B sa ating team Facebook. Mm-hmm. Dito sa ating team YouTube, ganun din. Letter B din ang sagot. And that is the correct answer. So B po 30, that's the correct answer. So ratio and proportion lamang po. You have 8 liters if it's 20% full. No, so 8 is a 20 equals. We're looking for the number of liters if it is 75% full. Okay, so we can just easily cross multiply this. Cross multiply mo lamang yung inyong um, fraction. So 8 times 75 divided by... Uh, or 8 times 75 equals 20x, okay? So that's 8 times 75 over 20. Uh, that will be equal to the value of x. We're looking for x here. Now, as you can see, you can easily um, simplify this, 8 and 20. Their GCF would be 4. So pwede nyo po siyang i-divide by 4, both of them by 4. So 8 divided by 4, that's 2. And of course, 20 divided by 4, that would be 5. Okay, so what you are given here is 2 times 75. 2 times 75, of course, is 150 divided by 5. And so you know that 150 divided by 5, that's 30. 
Okay, so 150, tingnan nyo lamang yung first two digits mo, that's 15, 15 divided by 5 is 3, then of course you can just supply the zero that you have there at the left. Okay, so you are uh, given the answer of 30. So 30 po ang tamang sagot. Okay, so letter B, 30 is the correct answer for number 18. Again, if you are in row, you will find this explanation, the slides there after this discussion. Now we go to number 19. How many 75 gram packs of sugar can be made from a 30 kilogram sack? Is it letter A, 25, letter B, 40, letter C, 400, or letter D, 2,500? What's the answer? Okay, what's your answer? Second to the last question na po tayo for tonight. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sabi ni Ma'am Jovelyn Gomora dito, Ma'am Christine, pag nakita mo ang question, hindi ka talaga maaantok. Ah, you can actually bring some, po pwede kayong mag-bring ng candies or chocolates or tubig, po pwede po, pwedeng may pagkain kayong dala. Pero yung sinasabi nila sa let, dapat walang label, no? Walang, walang label yung mga, walang ganito, oh, kasi tinitingnan nila, baka yung, yung uh, cheating materials nyo ay nandyan. Huwag na po kayong magdala ng reviewers nyo, no? Bawal po yan. So, you get the label ng inyong tubig, dapat wala siyang label. Uh, kahit mga candies nyo, chocolate, dapat eh, wala siya masyadong label na, no? na po pwede nyo sulatan kasi bawal po yan. Uh, when I took the let, I had, uh, I've also brought with me some food, pero believe me, you can't really eat, no? Hindi ka din makakain. Siguro eh, yung nakain ko lamang eh yung candy. So candy, chocolate, para lamang eh, active yung mind nyo. I had the seatmate when I took the let. Meron akong seatmate na marami siyang dala. Meron siyang isang loaf ng pan na dala. Meron siyang isang isang, uh, anong tawag dyan? Isang hand ng sagig na dala. Ang dami yung pagkain. So, chibog siya ng chibog habang uh, nag answer ng let, no? So, but I don't know if he made it. Okay? So, kanya-kanyang style naman. Kaya kanyang learning style naman tayo. So, alam mo naman yung inyong learning style. So, isa nga sa aming mga nasasuggest, isa sa aming sinasabi, do not try something new. Alam mong hindi ka sanay sa isang bagay, wag mong itry at the day of or on the day of the let. For example, eh nagtake ka ng memo, memo plus gold or whatever, no? First time mo lamang magtake noon on the day of the let pa. So wag niyo po mag, wag na po kayo magtry ng kung ano pang bagong ceremonies, especially on the day of the let, no? Ang po pwede niyo itry, itry niyo muna beforehand para malaman yung wala siyang adverse effect sa inyo. Baka imbis na makatulong yung memo plus goal nyo, eh, antukin kayo, no? So, kanya-kanyang learning style tayo, ma, yung uh, mas nakakakilala, pinaka nakakakilala sa iyong sarili ay ikaw, okay? So, alam mo yung learning style mo. Alam mo din, syempre, paano pakalmahin yung sarili mo in in uh, times like this. You will be under pressure, you will be under a lot of tense, no? So, uh, tensionado ka talaga right after the let para kang binugbog no umupo ka lang naman at nagsagot eh, but parang ang sakit-sakit ng katawan mo no para kang binugbog it's because of course of the psychological stress mental stress emotional stress lahat na ng stress nandiyan no kaya suggestion din namin bago kayo kumuha ng let eh wag muna kayo mag-away ng boyfriend mo kung ikaw naman boyfriend girlfriend uh -huh. kung sino may boyfriend girlfriend diyan ako kukuha din ng let wag muna kayo mag-away wag muna kayo mag-break no dapat eh wala kang problema on the day that you are taking the let okay wag mong awayin muna yung asawa mo pag ang asawa mo ay magti-take ng let kapitan Emerson Bar Barbosa no sabihin mo sa kay Mrs eh wag muna tayong mag-away dahil magti-take ako ng let bukas Dapat eh, nasa presence of mind ako, dapat eh, relax yung aking utak, okay? Wala kang ibang iniisip. Ang utak at puso mo ay relax na relax, ready na ready ka for the let. Okay, so number 19 na tayo, going back to the left here, your left question. Sana all my boyfriend at girlfriend. Walang problema ang mga single, sabi ni Ma'am RV Joy, tulod. Talaga ba? Oh, oh ang sakit talaga, wa wa Lalo na kung walang label at mas lalong wala. Oh, iba, iba, iba na naman yung pinuntahan ng usapan natin, ma'am, uh, Sir Mark Salvania. Sinasabi ko sa inyo yung hint ko para makapasa kayo sa lehet. No? Makapasa kayo sa lehet. Kayo naman po ay uh, dumiretso na kaagad kayo sa inyong mga hugot. Okay, so number 19 na tayo dito. How many 75-gram packs of sugar can be made from a 30-kilogram sack? 
No, karamihan sa inyo, yung answer nyo ay letter C. Chill lang mga single, kagaya ko, sabi ni Ma'am Hurley Joy de Aoy. Kawai-kawai sa mga single. Daming single. Now, what we can do here, of course, is to simply divide 30 kilogram by 75 grams. Okay? So, i-divide mo lamang yan para makuha mo yung tamang sagot. Kasi yung tanong, ilan kayang 75 gram packs of sugar ang pa uh, maaari nating uh, mabuo from the 30 kilogram sack. Yung problema natin dito, hindi pareho yung kanilang unit. So, pag dinivide nyo po ito ng diretso, mali po yung inyong sagot. Okay? One is in gram, the other is in kilogram. Now, uh, the correct answer here, of course, would be letter C, 400. Ito po yung ating mnemonics dito. Meron po tayong uh, video on this on Facebook and YouTube, no? Uh, your your metric conversions, how to easily convert metric units. Nasa YouTube na din po ito, nasa Facebook, no? So, this is our mnemonics here. These are the acronyms. King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. Again, that's King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. And each of the letter here would represent one prefix in your metric uh, system. No? So K here, that's kilo. H, Henry, that's hecto. Dai, that's deca. Deca po itong capital letter D. Do not confuse it with a small letter D. So again, this is deca. And your B here, this is a base unit. So yung base natin, yung isang letter lamang yung, yung inyong unit. So gram here, di ba yung ang ating symbol for gram or your variable for gram that we use would be G, no? Yung symbol natin would be G. And so we know that gram is a base unit. So liter, meter, gram, second, those are base units, okay? So, isang letter lamang. This is deci, okay? So, this is deci. Your small letter D is deci. Again, big letter D is deca. Capital D is deca. Small letter D is deci. You have centi and you have milli, okay? So, King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. That would be kilo, hecto, deca, base, deci, Senti and milli, okay? Hindi kasi ito tinuturo sa ating school, no? Yung teachers natin kasi sa ating school, imbis na padaliin, eh, mas pinapahirapan tayo. Okay, now we are given 30 kilogram here and we are going to convert this into uh, grams, no? So 30 kilo. So that means dito tayo manggagaling, that's kilo, di ba? Yung K natin dito, that's kilo. And we are going to convert this to gram. Now gram again, that is a base unit. So this is your base unit. So that means we are going to travel from K to B. Now, we are going to count the number of times that we move, okay? So that will be from K to, to B. We start one, two, and three. So that means we move three times to the right, okay? We move three times to the right. And so if we are given 30, if you are given 30 as your kilogram here, you know that 30 kilogram would be equal to 30,000 grams. So, yung 30,000? We move three times to the right. And since your number here is just 30, what you do is you add three zeros. Okay? So, nag-add ka lamang ng tatlong zero. And so, you have the value of 30,000 grams. If you have a decimal there, for example, in business 30 kilogram, eh, meron kang 2.80 for example, 2.80 kilograms meron tayo, no? And we are converting this to gram. If that happens, of course, you don't easily add the three zeros here dahil may decimal point ka. So what you do first is you move the decimal point kung ilan mang times yan na inimove natin going to our base unit. So we have one, two, three. Sa makatawid, isang zero lamang po yung inyong i-add, okay? So if you have 2.80 kilograms, that would be equal to 2,800 grams of sugar if you have for example um what a medical 0 0.04 kilogram okay 0 0.04 kilogram you are converting this to gram of course you move three times to the right that's one two three that means your answer would be 40 Okay, that would be 40 grams of sugar. Now, what if you question your what if we are converting from centi to base? Okay, or or beyond that. If that's the case, if you are moving to the left, dapat yan din po yung movement ng inyong decimal point. So dapat e eh, moving to the left ka din. 
Okay, so that's just how easy you can convert uh, between your metric units. Again, we already have a video on this. You can find that both on Facebook and YouTube. So, balikan nyo po yan, hanapin nyo po yan. I-take down nyo po yung uh, lahat ng videos na kailangan nyo mapanood. And we have so many videos. We have a playlist for Gen Ed, Prof Ed. We also, of course, have a playlist uh, for our general education, professional education live streams. It's almost 70 videos. So, panoorin nyo po yung lahat. So, again, we already have a value of 30 kilograms here as 30 thousand grams okay so 30 kilograms small is equal to 30 thousand grams and of course now we can easily divide that since they already have the same units no so the same unit now 30 thousand grams we can just easily divide it by 75 grams we can cancel the unit and so the correct answer would be 400 okay so 400 po ang tamang sagot dito Okay, so for 100, that's letter C, and that is the correct answer. China oil, my jowa, sabi ni Ma'am Giselle Tumanday. Okay lang yan. Focus muna sa let. Pagkatapos ng let, pwede na mag-jowa. Okay? Now, number 20, last one for tonight. Last item for tonight. Okay, Carol's average score on her first three tests is 90. If her average on her last two tests is 80, what is the average score for all... Five tests. Is it letter A, 85, letter B, 86, letter C, 87, or letter D, 88? Okay, what do you think is the correct answer here? Mm hmm. Oh, ano na? Ano nang sagot nyo dito? Hindi pa rin kayo nakaka-move on sa jowa-jowa? Okay, letter A ang sagot, or letter B ang karamihang sagot ng ating team YouTube. What about our team Facebook? Karamihan sa inyo, uh, may A, may B. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you think is the correct answer? Ligwak. Maraming na ligwak. Okay lang po yan. Marami pang time para mag-aral. Okay, so less less parties. Bawal naman yata party ngayon sa Pinas, di ba? Bawal yung parties. Less jowa muna. Less Netflix. Less uh, TV, no? So mag-focus po muna tayo sa let. Huwag po muna mag-party. Alam naman natin na may mga napapahamak sa party, no? Ngayon, eh, um, super famous na news sa Pilipinas. Yung pagpa-party na uwi sa uh, kamatayan, no? So, be very wary. And of course, be very careful when you are trusting people. Okay? And of course, do not put yourself in that situation. Kung maaaring iwasan, iwasan na po. Aba, Sir Mark Salvania, my wish dito sa Team YouTube. Sana mag-lockdown ngayong February 14. Ano pong malalockdown? Sir Yuri Benazir Fuentes, thank you po for starting a watch party. First timer yata, Sir Yuri. Hello po, welcome. Okay, what's the correct answer for number 20? This is the last item that we have for tonight. No, Last item for Gen Ed for this weekend. Of course, tomorrow we are going to have your Prof Ed. Carol's average score on her first three tests is 90. If her average on her last two tests is 80, what is the average score for all five tests? The correct answer here, of course, would be letter B, 86. Okay, letter B, 86. That is the correct answer. Now, how did we get the correct answer that we have here? Of course, we simply multiplied and we added the scores and we divided them by five. Okay, so we have... 3 times 90, kasi sabi dito, no, 3 times 90 daw. So first three, uh, three tests niya, 90 yung average niya. In her second uh, or two, last two tests niya, 80 naman yung average niya. So we added this, so we multiply 3 times 90, and we add that to 2 times 80. Then, of course, we divide all of them by 5 because there is a total of 5 tests, okay? Now, as you can see, we can simplify this. You have 5 here. 5 can be the GCF between your 90, 80, and, of course, 5. 5 divided by 5, of course, that's 1. 90 divided by 5, that's 18, okay? And uh, 80 divided by 5, that would be 16, 
Okay, so now we are left with just the equation 3 times 18 plus 2 times 16. Wala na tayong denominator na 5 dito. We've already canceled that by dividing that by the GCF of, of 5. No, So now we only have 3 times 18 plus 2 times 16, giving us 54 plus 32. And so the correct answer is 86. So 86 po ang tamang sagot. Okay, so I hope you have all learned tonight. And that ends tonight's discussion of our general education. Again, if you are in GROW, all this stuff can be found there a few minutes from now, no, right after this live stream. And of course, abangan niyo po yung ating top 20 for this live stream discussion tonight. Now, again, tomorrow we will be back with your professional education. So please do not be late, do not be absent. Tomorrow, your quizzes link will be found on your uh, Facebook page. Okay, so that ends tonight's discussion. We go back to our main slide. Mm -hmm. And of course, we end tonight's discussion with our closing prayer from Pastor Efren Esteban. Okay, so let's join each other. Sa ating pong closing prayer. Please join me in our closing prayer. Sana po, Panginoon, sa amin pong pansamantalang paghihiwalay, uh, Sa oras po na ito ay dala po namin ang kapayapaan, ang tibay po ng aming loob, Panginoon. Sa gitna po ng mga pagsubok na dumarating sa aming buhay, O Diyos, sana po ikaw ay lagi namin kasama. Huwag mo po kayong pabayaan, Panginoon. Ikaw po ang aming inaasahan sa lahat ng pagkakataon. Ikaw po ang Diyos ng karunungan. Ikaw po ang Diyos na makapangyarihan. Kaya iniaasa po namin ang lahat sa inyo. Patuloy niyo po na pagpalain ang family ni Ma'am Meg at saka ni Sir Ram. Maging ang aming mga pamilya o Diyos. Dalain po namin ang pagbuti ng kalagayan ng aming paligid o Diyos. Sana po ilayo mo po kami sa anumang sakit o anumang karamdaman, Panginoon. Patuloy niyo po na pagpalain ang mga namumuno sa amin o Diyos na magkaroon ng dakilang pag-ibig ng pagkakaisa, ng sinseridad sa kanilang panilbihan. O Diyos, salamat sa lahat at sana po ay baon namin ang pagmamahalan sa bawat isa sa amin at pagdadamayan, O Diyos. Salamat po, ikaw po nawa ang siyang maitaas at makilala sa bawat pagkakataon. Patawarin niyo po kami, O Diyos, sa aming mga pagkukulang sa inyo upang maging karapat dapat po kami sa inyo, Ama. Sa pangalan ni Jesus, ito po ang mga aming dalangin Amen. Amen. Maraming salamat, Pastor Efren Esteban, of course, for uh, preparing our opening and closing prayers tonight. All right, so sa muli, ito po si Coach Mac ng inyong Guru Pinoy, and I hope that you have learned tonight, and do not give up. Don't uh, lose hope, stay focused, huwag munang mag-jowa, no? Paunti-unti, paunti-unti po, eh, mag-learn tayo. Kapit bisig po, huwag po kayong bumitaw, no? Ma ma bilis na lamang po, madali na lamang yung, um, mabilis yung araw, no? yung oras, eh. At uh, before you know it, we already have March 28th, and that's already going to be the day that you take the let, okay? So again, I leave you with the saying, maliit manabutil ng mga kaalaman, ang dulo nito ay malaking kaginawaan. Maraming salamat, good night, see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Bye.